So uh, thanks Simon to share about the, the, the trade fine and also define. So uh, in the next section, uh, we are great to have uh, Isaac uh, from WeBank, which is a very famous uh, China, uh, China bank. Uh, he will be talking about the federated learning uh, for uh, for the banking and he is the AI solution architects. So how are you Isaac? Hi Patrick, nice to see you and of you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Your, your voice is loud in here. So, and I can also see your screen as well. So uh, is it all good? And then I pass the time to you. Okay, sure. So uh, welcome today. I'm Isaac Wong, uh, the AI solution architect of WeBank, uh, helping out to promote the uh, technologies uh, within WeBank to the industry, to the enterprise, and uh, also international business. Uh, today's topic is federated learning in actions, uh, business use case, and value propositions. To begin with, uh, I'll be talking about a little bit on uh, WeBank and then share some observations uh, regarding major technology trends and also why or what federal learning has been bringing to the table, uh, helping out uh, to meet the challenges uh, in AI and then share with you some proven use case of federal learning in mainland China and then some benchmarking uh, performances of federated learning against typical uh, machine learning uh, modelings. And lastly, there will be a Q&A session. So to say, WeBank is the first China uh, digital bank. Uh, as you may have read that the bank is uh, found in 2014. Uh, talking about the profile of the staff, uh, you, you can see that almost uh, more than 56% of the uh, employee is coming from a technology background that helps the bank to uh, drive the technology and innovation forward. Uh, with that, uh, the bank is offering the retail loans to uh, more than 270 million uh, retail customers and then to the corporate uh, that is talking about 1.8 million plus uh, SME that is uh, being served with the loan uh, in as a corporate loan. So you can also see that uh, the peak transaction that the bank has been processing in a daily manner is talking about 750 million transactions. Uh, with that, the reason or the main factors that is helping uh, the, the growth and also the operation of the digital bank is this kind of uh, leading technologies or capability I'm showing you uh, that can broadly uh, categorize into four. Uh, A stands for artificial intelligence, and B, blockchain, C, cloud computing, and big data. So this uh, umbrella of technologies has been successfully deployed, verified within the bank, and also uh, that is being rolled out into the uh, international market and other uh, partners and enterprises as well. So today we will be particularly focuses on federal learning, uh, a cutting edge technologies we are seeing in the market. From the market, we are observing a prominent trend. This is a hip cycle from Gartner describing the privacy technology of uh, 2021. And you can see that federated machine learning is being categorized as one of the innovation trigger uh, technologies in this hip cycle. Apart from that, uh, according to the first half of 2020 uh, observations, we can see that researchers uh, published more than thousands of papers on this topic compared to 180 uh, papers in 2018. And also, the, the trend is resonated with the Google search of the term is on a searching trend. And besides, we have been hearing a lot about privacy enhancing computation 
techniques uh, in these years. Uh, from the left-hand side, you can see that it is a broad uh, this is a broad umbrella of such technologies. And in the red dotted rectangular, you can see the homomorphic encryption is being a key component to facilitate the successfulness deployment of the federal learning. And since we all know that privacy is becoming a bigger issue and also more concerns are being placed by organizations regarding the privacy protections. And Gartner also believed that by the time of 2025, PEC, uh, there will be more than half of the large organization adopting such technologies for multi-party data analytics use cases. So the, the rise of the threat to learning or the gaining of traction of it in the market is with a very compelling reasons because it has been bringing to the table a new kind of approach to machine learning, particularly solving the problem of data silo. So we know that data itself, uh, data science itself is talking about data. If there is no data, then there will be no data science. Typically, we are seeing data as a bottleneck. Uh, data silo has been a bottleneck to the performance of machine learning. On the left-hand side, you can see that uh, many companies are suffering the challenges like, for example, uh, in the example, a bank, obviously, they are seeing the value of leveraging the data from social medias that is talking about describing the uh, uh, individual's behavior, lifestyle, and also browsing history preferences. That will be greatly enhanced uh, propensity modeling for cross-selling or for the kind of use cases in uh, credit uh, default predictions. However, because of the considerations of data sensitivity or business consideration, also privacy concern, there is never a exchange of data or sharing of data to enable uh, the building up of more uh, larger model come up with a more accurate performance. From another perspective, even within conglomerates that are having different department or like company that has been uh, a regional basis, have different country or entities, they are prohibited to share data directly despite they know that it is uh, it is without question a more holistic view of a company or, or, or their customer will result in a more accurate model. So this is all the kind of data silo or data privacy consideration that has prohibited the further enhancement of modelings. On the right-hand side, you can see that there has been attempt to try to enrich the data that can be possibly be used by modeling, but they are all in vain. For example, buying data is illegal. Usage of the desensitized data itself may not yield a very good outcome, or even try to leverage model that is being trained in other contexts with similar industry or domain. The result is also not guaranteed. So not until the availability of federal learning, we have a better resolution to the challenges of data silos and then come up with better modelings. So this picture is talking about uh, the operations or the realisation of federal learning in two different ways. So in short, federal learning is talking about a distributed machine learning framework that does not involve any physical exchange of data, but just the exchanges or communication of components or information that is necessary for the training of data. If in a more technical term, you can understand this as the kind of uh, informations or components 
that is helping out to solve the uh, optimization problem of reducing or the kind of loss function reductions into an optimized manner. So all the components being exchanged is all encrypted and uh, in the kind of homomorphic encryption techniques so that there will be no leakage of any data or exchange of data. So that based on these technologies, the model building can be collaborated while fulfilling the requirement of compliance, also the rules and government and policies as well. So maybe uh, yesterday, my colleagues Kive have been talking about the, uh, the, that is the under the hood, the technical perspective of how homomorphic encryption is working for federal learning. So I will not be going to that area today. And you can see that on the left hand side, one of the application of federal learning is, for example, hypothetically, we have a financial institution A. They may have these uh, subsidiaries or department joining the network on one side and also external data provider joining on the other hand so that they can collaborate in building up a better model for different use cases. And on the right hand side, it is talking about connection between companies, for example, you can see that there are multiple financial service institutions joining the network and then collaborate in the sense that also with the peripheral data of different data provider and come up with a better model for particular use cases that is talking about a federal learning network. The underlying uh, that is a federal learning model I can describe that or categorize that into two. The left hand side is the horizontal federal learning. It is talking about the uh, stacking of data coming from different parties that is uh, having the table or data in equivalent format or number of columns or attributes. So that because of the enrichment of number of records then that will be resulting in a improve of performance of the model being trained. And on the right hand side, it is another uh, mode of uh, flat rate learning that is talking about vertical flat rate learning. You can see that parties, uh, different parties is contributing uh, different attributes, uh, broadening the columns of features that can be analysis or uh, machine learn uh, for the algorithm to build up a more better models. So there will be a matching key to ensure that uh, the, the correct record is being intercept. And then the resulting set with more columns than a standalone data set can be resulting in a better model for prediction of uh, any kind of use, use cases. And then I will be talking about the use cases or adoption of federal learning uh, in mainland China. The first one is uh, adoption of ReBank itself to facilitate the offering of SME loan with federal learning technologies. So the context is that um, because SME data is something difficult and rare to collect and so it is quite a challenge typically for any banks to have a decent model uh, or a quantitative way to approve and also measure the credit worthiness of particular SME. So with the intention to serve more SME or the long tails, so ReBank has been deploying the technology of federal learning together with a large invoicing company, which is providing details or, they, they, or, or details transactions of how the particular SME is doing regarding their purchase of good or regarding their business operations. 
So with the combination of such data with internal weed bank data, they are able to provide more loan in a more accurate manner and also in a more cost-effective manner, resulting in a 1.8 uh, million plus portfolio of SME loan portfolios. And then another use cases or adoption is on the anti-money laundering domain in banking industry. Particularly in banks or insurance company, they will have their transaction monitoring systems and also the uh, machine learning model based on their historical transaction data and build up to provide alerts on suspicious transactions. So with the help of fat rate learning, you can see that from the left-hand side, applying the horizontal fat rate learning can enhance the AML prediction model for suspicious transactions. And on top of that, we have a additional layer of vertical fat rate learning that is utilizing data from internet companies. To be precise, they are talking about geographic location data and mobile payment data of individuals. So this further enhanced the uh, model's accuracy and also optimized the results. That results in the reduce of the false positive and a better uh, efficiency of those investigators' works. And next, this is a applications of federal learning on bank credit risk control. The context is there are there is a bank at the very first beginning, they they do not have a very good mechanism to and to ensure the privacy data protection. So that they has been anticipating a lot of challenges to leverage or co or cooperate with uh, party that can contribute external data for the usage of credit risk control. At the same time, they are facing the pressure of regulatory body asking them to build up or ramp up their risk control capability. So with the leveraging of federal learning technologies based on their own data and also the data coming from the internet com company describing internet behavior of individuals, they are able to build up their own credit model of for retail and fulfill the uh, risk control regulatory requirements. And the last one is in another industry that is the optimization of pricing for insurance. So in this case, that is the insurance company that is leveraging the horizontal threat rate learning on the data of multiple insurance company so that a more price or risk estimation regarding claims uh, from the model results can be achieved. So that whenever the reinsurance company is trying to offer the uh, that is the uh, the their offer to the insurance company, a more fairly priced manner can be achieved. And then you can see that there is a additional application of threat rate learning in a vertical sense as well to enhance the uh, performance of the model by using internet data. For example, in this case, this is a auto uh, insurance use cases. The internet data that is relevant will be those kinds of trip data, consumption data, or the lifestyle, and also the driving patterns of individuals. So all add up into a better betterment of the model performance for pricing of auto insurance. After mentioning about the use cases or adoption of federal learning, I would like to share with you some kind of benchmarking uh, of federal learning against 
traditional machine learning that is centralizing the data and then see if there is any uh, discrepancy of uh, accuracy or performance in model uh, in, diff, uh, in the, the two kinds of deployment. We are, we are illustrating the concept through a demo data that is openly or publicly available that is called give me some credit. So basically it is a data to facilitate the prediction of uh, credit default probabilities. And you can see that from the competition's result, the best AUC achieve is 0.8639. And this is a, a table talking about 150,000 records and there are 10 explanatory variables that is relevant to the credit loan predictions. So with this data, we would like to test how is the performance of factory learning against traditional machine learnings. So the scope, I will be describing uh, how the factory learning is being performed. So we try to split the data to two parties. From the left-hand side, party A, they have a data set consisting of six explanatory variable and the target variables. Arbitrarily, we assign uh, another or the rest of the X that is four X to the party B. So with a vertical uh, that is fed away learning, we match the data, making the intercept. And then with a train to validation ratio of 8.2, we make use of one of the distributed and also secure gradient boost algorithm to test the results of the factory learning. And this screen is showing the enterprise version of factory learning WeBank is provisioning uh, now to make use of the uh, federated learning techniques. So it is called Federated AI Technology Enabler. In short, it is FATE. So you can see that there are uh, algo configurations with the PROM and also there are visualizations describing the training process with this enterprise version software, describing the DHG that is uh, the flow in a diagram way of the machine learning pipeline and also providing modeling dashboard to monitor and evaluate the performance of the models. So as I said that uh, the secure, secure boosting trees algorithm is one of the algorithm available in FATE with the usage of homomorphic encryption so to ensure the privacy of data is being secure. So the training we saw will be as shown here. As a baseline, the left-hand side is a hypothetical uh, situation. We try to arbitrarily take six explanatory variables to train with the uh, that is XGBoost algorithm uh, mimicking the situation where we are having limited data that is six explanatory variable out of 10. So obviously you can see that uh, the AUC is not the best. In terms of the training AUC, it is 0.821. So in the middle of the screen, we we are talking about the results of factory learning. With factory learning, we are able to achieve a far better result. That is talking about 0.879 AUC. That is a 7.5% of improvement, which is very, very significant. If we are talking about credit modeling in banking industries. So when we are comparing to a hypothetical, but never exist, scenarios that is the centralization of data 
uh, training all the, the X or the 10 variables in one centralized location with traditional XGBoost. The result is comparable to factor rate learning. That is about 0.87. So the message here is that with factor rate learning, we are able to come up with a comparable performance of model to just like what we are doing in a centralized way. And at the same time, we can be able to, that is preserve, and also that is uh, the privacy concern or regarding the sensitive of data can be catered. So with that, we, we are able to, to, to understand or, or that is to, uh, to value the, the unique uh, proposition of factory learning that the accuracy is not being compromised, but the, the, the kind of uh, more data can be used to build up uh, better models. So I think the last pages is something about the credentials of factor rate learning. From the left hand top corner, it is talking about WeBank has been the key finder and also the promoter of the industry standard of factor rate learning. And there are also certification being received uh, regarding fate. And in the bottom, we are seeing that uh, Hong Kong MA and our four trees are advocating and uh, that is promoting the adoptions of uh, factor rate learning as well as a fintech in Hong Kong. And also there, there are publications openly available for people who want to know more about the, uh, the, the details of factor rate learning. So I think uh, this is almost at the, to the end of my sharings. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Isaac, for your first post sharing. And then uh, I, I do see some questions, but uh, uh, we have limited time. So uh, I think people is actually interested to know about the barrier. So you solve the operation problem, et cetera, so how exactly it, it, it can be deployed. But um, right. I think for those audience, uh, maybe if you have um, some questions, feel free to reach out um, Isaac or WeBand offline so that they can actually talk to you directly. So uh, I just sorry that uh, we don't have enough time for Q&A uh, right now. So thanks again for your support and then uh, see you next time. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks.